life in Syria before the war was pretty normal. Syria was such like a really safe country. Leaving Syria was not like a choice for me. When I was in grade 11, the war started and like the situation just started getting worse and worse, especially for young men. It was really unsafe because you get recruited either the military or the, the opposite side, like the militias. So you have to like choose. So for me, the choice was like to quit school and study by myself at home. And I was hoping that once I graduate high school, when I go to university, it might get better. But the situation just kept getting worse and worse. Every time I leave the house, I'm not sure if I'm going to return or not. It was the summer of 2015, and I was watching the news and seeing all of the images coming out from the migration crisis that was happening. I was going into university and wanted to find a way to help. That semester I had class with Dr. Ann Diamond, and she was chairing the U of L Refugee Action Committee, which was sponsoring families. And then the opportunity came up to meet with two members of the World University Service of Canada. In that instance, I knew I wanted to become a part of that in some way. There weren't a lot of um, available opportunities for higher education for Syrian, for Syrian refugees in Jordan. So I started applying for scholarships and sponsorships, and this is how I found was the University of Lethbridge. And the World University Service of Canada is a nationwide organization. Through that organization, they have the Student Refugee Program. The Student Refugee Program allows students in post-secondary institutions in Canada to sponsor refugee students. It's students sponsoring students of the same age and with the same goal of achieving a post-secondary education. By the beginning of May 2016, I got the email from WESC saying that I got admitted to the University of Lethbridge in the program of new media. Like that moment probably, probably it's one of the happiest moments in in my life. I was overwhelmed for probably the next three months till I like moved to Lethbridge. And yeah, like you finally find the opportunity to pursue your dream. Like you find people who are doing little things overseas and they just basically change your life. Like I didn't know any of the people in Moisk here in, in the University of Lethbridge. And when they started, they just wanted to help someone. And that one was me. Like they didn't know who they are helping. And it turned out me and like, they basically changed my life. And I remember not being able to sleep the night before his arrival because I was so excited and also like really nervous because we didn't know what to expect. We went to the airport and we all had signs and posters to welcome him. And I remember him coming through the gate and I think we all started laughing immediately. Like when I first arrived here, I, I honestly, I was like really shocked with the size of the airplane from Calgary to Lethbridge. I was like, oh God, I'm moving to a village because it's really small. <laughs> but uh, when I arrived, like I didn't know if anyone would be like waiting for me at the airport. So I arrived and I found like probably like 15 people holding signs like, welcome Abdullah. And I was like, what? Like I was, I was really overwhelmed. And these people were like a family. They were like very supportive. Like, we're like best friends now. I'm like best friends with most of them. In the club's second year, the students realized they couldn't fundraise that much every year. So they went to the student body for support and their support was overwhelming. The referendum asked every student on campus to pay $2 and the support from the community was um, immense. So now every student's involved in this project of bringing a refugee student every year. The referendum for what? It passed. <laughs> the moment when we found out that uh, the, that their friend and passed, we were like, we were all overwhelmed. Like most of the members were like crying because they worked so hard in the first year to fundraise to bring me to the university. But now all the hard work paid off. Like all the all the events, all the like bake sales, all the flyers, all, all the conversations that was about what's to raise awareness, it paid off. It allows you to see what can happen when you come together with a group of people and what you can accomplish when you're all following that same kind of passion. It's really great to feel the work you do has an impact on other people's lives. The reason I really believe in WASC is because the impact they have is long-term impact. Like when you educate someone, it's not you just give them food for today. No, you give them food for a lifelong. 
I think education is the only way for us to like to help anyone. Just educate them and they will do good in their life. The WISP program is an amazing program because it literally changes lives. It changes lives of the refugees who we bring. Um, often the people who are empowered to come study in Canada are people who wouldn't normally have a lot of other opportunities. So for them, it's incredibly life-changing. The part that surprised me was how life-changing it was for the students who are working on our end. How much the broader perspective that WUSC has given them changes their lives, impacts their studies, changes their future plans. All of that has been a fantastic experience for me. I have a lot of problems in this day and age with ignorance and the, the, you know, the antidote to, to ignorance is education and learning. The more we can do to educate people that are in these countries that are being suppressed, the better. I'm quite enthused about it. Moving to Lethbridge was, was a huge, a huge step for me because if I was still in Syria, I think I wouldn't have dreams. I wouldn't have like any belief in myself that I can, that I can actually progress, that I can actually improve. I can do something better tomorrow. If I can like summarize my whole journey in one word, it's, it's hope. Like now I can have hope. Like three, four years ago before moving here, I was too scared to have hope because like you can lose it like this. Here it's like, no, you're allowed to have hope. Like you're allowed to have dreams. You're allowed to like say that, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do this next year. You're allowed to plan because you kind of have control over your, your, your future. You kind of have control over your life. Where I was, no, you don't have control over anything. Like, so for me, hope, hope like that, that's, that's how I summarize my whole journey, like from Syria to Jordan to Lethbridge. Ending up here was probably the best thing that will ever happen to me.